we're asked to find the Laplace transform, which is big F of S, of the function F of T equals T cubed. So looking at the definition of a Laplace transform here at the bottom, we have the Laplace transform of T to the third is equal to big F of S, which equals the integral from zero to infinity of F of T, which is T cubed, times E raised to the power of negative ST dt. Notice how here we have an improper integral, so we need to rewrite this using limit notation. This is equal to the limit as B approaches infinity of the integral from, instead of from zero to infinity, we'd have from zero to B, again because B is approaching infinity, of T to the third times E raised to the power of negative ST dt. Now for our next step, we'll find the indef integral of t to the third e to the negative s t with respect to t. Then we'll come back here and find the def integral and then determine the limit. For our next step, let's find the integral of t to the third e to the negative s t with respect to t. This is going to take quite a bit of work because we'll have to apply integration by parts shown here below multiple times. To begin, we'll let u equal t to the third, which means differential v is equal to e raised to the power of negative st dt. So we differentiate to find differential u, and we integrate to find v. The derivative of t to the third with respect to t would be three t squared. So differential u equals three t squared dt. And now we need to integrate both sides of the equation here to find v. So we'd integrate e to the negative st with respect to t. This requires u substitution, where u equals negative st, differential u equals negative s dt. So dividing both sides by negative s, we have negative one over s, differential u equals dt. So when we integrate here, we'll have an extra factor of negative one divided by s. V is equal to negative one divided by s, e to the negative st. So applying the integration by parts formula, we have u times v, which would be negative one divided by s t to the third e to the negative s t minus the integral of v du. Looking at v times du, notice how the product will be negative because we have a minus here, it becomes plus. And then let's write this as three divided by s the integrand function would be t to the second u the negative s t dt. And now to integrate here, we'll have to perform u substitution again. So to integrate here, it'll be similar to what we did here, except now u equals t squared. So differential u equals two t dt, but differential v is still e raised to the power of negative s t dt. So when we integrate here to find v, we get v equals negative one divided by s, e to the negative st. We need to be careful here though because we're going to have three divided by s times the quantity uv minus the integral of v to u. So this first term stays the same. We have negative one divided by s t to the third e to the negative st and then we'll have plus three divided by s times u times v is going to be negative one divided by s t to the second e to the negative st minus the integral of v du. Again, we have minus here. v times du is negative, so this becomes plus. Let's write this as two divided by s times the integral of t e to the negative st dt. Before we integrate here though, let's distribute the three divided by s to keep things more organized. So the first term stays the same. And then we'll have minus three divided by s squared, t squared, e to the negative st. Then we'll have plus six divided by s squared times the integral of t e to the negative st dt. And now I'll perform integration by parts again here where we'd have u equals t, so differential u equals dt, 
differential V is equal to E raised to the power of negative ST dt. So integrating here to find V, we get V equals again negative one divided by S e to the negative ST. So these first two terms stay the same. And we're going to have six divided by S squared times the quantity U times V. Well, U times V is negative one divided by S T e to the negative ST and then minus the integral of V du. Again, V times du is negative because we have minus here becomes plus. So we have plus one over S times the integral of E raised to the power of negative ST dt. Again, to keep things organized, let's distribute six divided by S squared here and here. So the first two terms stay the same. And then we have minus six divided by S cubed t e to the negative s t plus six divided by s cubed times the integral of e raised to the power of negative s t dt. Now to integrate e raised to the power of negative s t dt, we've already done that several times up here. So the first three terms stay the same. So we have plus six divided by s cubed times the integral of e raised to the power of negative s t with respect to t is negative one divided by s e to the negative s t. And of course we have plus a constant of integration. Let's go ahead and find this product and write this one more time on the next slide. So for this last step to find the in def integral, let's change the form of these first three terms and then we'll find this product. So let's write this first term as negative t to the third divided by s e raised to the power of negative s t. Let's write the second term as minus three t squared divided by s squared e to the negative s t. Let's write the third term as minus six t divided by s cubed e to the negative s t. And let's write this product as minus six divided by s to the fourth e to the negative s t and then plus c. So this is the in def integral. Remember our goal was to find this def integral and determine the limit. So now that we know the antiderivative or the in def integral though, we can write this as the limit as b approaches infinity of negative t to the third divided by s e to the negative s t minus three t squared divided by s squared e to the negative s t minus six t divided by s cubed e to the negative s t and then finally minus six divided by s to the fourth e to the negative s t. And again, the limits of integration are from t equals zero to t equals b. And now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a. So we'll first substitute b for t. So we'll have the limit as b approaches infinity of, again we're substituting b for t. So we'll have negative b to the third divided by s times e raised to the power of negative s b minus three b squared divided by s squared times e raised to the power of negative s b minus six b divided by s to the third times e raised to the power of negative s b and finally minus six divided by s to the fourth times e raised to the power of negative s b. And now we substitute zero for t. Notice all of these terms contain a factor of t except this last term. So these first three terms would be zero because we'd have zero cubed here, zero squared here, zero here. So we're just left with minus six divided by s to the fourth times e raised to the power of, this would be negative s times zero, which would be e to the zero. And now let's determine this limit on the next slide. Now to determine the limit as b approaches infinity, if we needed to, we could write these first four terms by moving the exponential term down to the denominator. For example, in this first term, we could write this as negative b raised to the power of three divided by s times e raised to the power of positive s b. To determine the limit as b approaches infinity in this form, we may need to apply L'Hopital's rule several times, but the limit will be equal to zero. And so these four terms all approach zero as b approaches infinity. So we're just left with minus negative six divided by s to the fourth times e to the zero, which is one. So this limit is equal to negative and then negative six divided by s to the fourth 
which gives us positive six divided by s to the fourth, which is the Laplace transform of f of t equals t to the third. So to summarize, the Laplace transform of t to the third, which equals big F of s, is equal to six divided by s to the fourth. So going back to our first slide, again we now know big F of s is equal to six divided by s to the fourth. Now this was quite a bit of work, and just like there are formulas for derivatives, there are formulas for Laplace transforms. So it would have been much faster if we use the Laplace transform formula shown here, where if we have f of t equals t to the third, then n equals three, which means the Laplace transform, big F of s, is equal to three factorial divided by s raised to the power of three plus one, or s to the fourth. So again, knowing that f of t is equal to t to the third, we can quickly determine the Laplace transform of t to the third, which equals big F of s is equal to, we have t to the third, so n is three, so we'd have three factorial divided by s raised to the power of three plus one. Well, three factorial is three times two times one divided by s to the fourth, which of course gives us six divided by s to the fourth. So after we do several of these using the definition of a Laplace transform, we'll then just use the formulas to determine the Laplace transforms. I hope you found this helpful.